welcome to Kingdom Come Ministries, where our leaders are Apostle William Rogers Jr. and Pastor Dr. Donna Rogers. Our prayer is that as you listen to today's message, you let the Spirit of God use the Word of God to transform your life. Now, let us prepare our hearts and minds for the Word of God. best way you can bless him, you bless him for that. Jermaine, let's pay homage to Bishop Don with I love you. If you know him. Come on, if you know it, all you're saying is I love you. This is where I first heard it from. Keep saying it until you mean it. And when you mean it, you're going to feel it. Come on, I want it to come out of here. I want it to come out of here. You all are loosing that in this earth realm. You're loosing it in this earth realm. You're loosing it amidst all of the hatred, all of the bigotry. You're loosing a love for him. And as we hear of all these wars and rumors of wars, Russia, Ukraine, Hamas, Israel, you're still saying, I love you.
Now let's bless God for our pastor. Let's bless God for her. She's here today. Come on, let's bless God for her life and her strength. And we want to continue to pray for those that are sick, those that are shut in, those that are under any type of physical attack. We want to make sure that we remain an intercessor between them and God. Because you do know there do come times where you can feel a place to where you don't even feel like praying. You just want to know, do anybody hear me? Goes back to that sound. Goes back to that sound. So we want to continue to pray for the sick. A lot of people out sick. And we pray that God will continue to strengthen them daily and that they recover well and even before I get into this lesson let me just say thank you from myself and our pastor of everything that you have done for us even the month of October which was allotted as Nas National Clergy Appreciation Month where the members of congregations or that they deemed men and women God as their pastors, they would do something special and do something nice for them. Used to be a time in the church where they used to have church anniversaries and pastors anniversaries. You don't hear of that anymore. And there's many who come, go, they be blessed by the ministry of pastors who labor before God and then spend time to feed the, his sheep, the people. And many times people never say, Pastor, thank you. I will say thank you for the time you spend. Your willingness to be you and different. Thank you. You have no explanations to give because all God wants the people to continue to see is Him. Thank you. So, from us, I'd like to say thank you to the church, to the ministry, because without you, there is no church. Church is a group of, a called out group of people comprised together. So I wanna say thank you to each and every one of you for the love, the kindness, the wonderful gifts that you share. Oh man, it's, I could go on and on. But let's go to our lesson text on to the book of Romans, chapter 12. The familiar passage that we have allotted as the foundational text of this. Let's read it together. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourselves set apart as a living sacrifice holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Let's go back to that after the comma, dealing with so, but I want you to say rather than so that you, I want you to say so that I. And rather than say purpose for you, I want you to say purpose for me. Let's read it. So that I may prove for myself what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for me. You may be seated in the presence of our great 
God and our King. Such a timely word that I'd like to pick back up on. My mental is me. Our pastor have been talking about vision and the process of how we hear a thing is how we began to look into what it is that we hear. So when I heard her speak about vision, I heard her saying, you're mental. You're mental. Out of all of the apostles that wrote any of the letters to the churches, I believe that only the apostle Paul would be considered a modern day psychologist. Because he wrote more about the mind, the mental, than any of the other men of God. Just a sidebar I thought I would throw in there. And I began to ponder on that and began to look at my own life. And even as a young child, I always have loved God. I've always loved him. I, I, I don't know any other way to be than the way that I am because I love God just that much. In my quiet space one day, I began to write. And I said, as I reflect the understanding of the journey, takes me back to around two years old. I'm seeing myself standing on the fourth or fifth step, looking down as I was preaching to an invisible church that was actually visible to me at that time. Daddy would then ask me to come down and pray for the people. I would repeat that behavior every day until I remember mama taking me to kindergarten. After school, I would go and sit on the stairs and be quiet. I knew I saw things in the spirit realm. I just didn't know how to articulate it. The mental has always intrigued. While we are all mental, there is a difference between mental health and mental disorders. Mental health is the overall wellness of how you think, regulate your feelings, and behave. Sometimes people experience a significant disturbance in this mental functioning. A mental disorder may be present when patterns or changes in thinking, feeling, or behaving cause distress or disrupt a person's ability to function. A mental health disorder may may affect how well you maintain personal or family relationships. The disorder may affect how well you function 
in social settings. The disorder may affect how well you perform at work or school. The disorder may affect how well you learn at a level expected for your age and intelligence. And then your mental health disorder may affect how well you participate in other important activities. So when I coined the phrase, my mental is me, I'm saying, wherever you are in your mind or your intellect, your cerebral, your brain, your rational, psychological, cognitive, abstract, conceptual, theoretical, your mind. Because when your environment, associations, and influences, listen to this, become more profound, more prominent, and more prolific in your life. When your environment, you can tell who a person is by who they associate with. You can tell who their circle is to identify with who they are. And whenever your environment, associations, influences become more profound, prominent, and prolific in your life than your creator and his plan for you, what else are the expectations? I see who your circle of communication is. What else should I express, expect any less than that? That's the circle of your communication. In other words, you're telling me who you are. Some of us have a very small circle. Some have many Facebook and social media friends. You can tell who they are. What are the expectations? You are likely to lose sight of the true purpose of life and make decisions that are not in line with God nor his will. When you listen to them and when you look to them and when you respect what they be saying and when you respect everything about them, I'm talking to all of us, and it comes to me first. What are the expectations? You're likely to lose sight of the true purpose of life and make decisions that are not in line with God's will. This can lead to feelings of inadequacy, confusion, dissatisfaction, and doubt, as well as a lack of trust in his ability to lead you in the right direction. Ultimately, it can lead to a life without purpose or direction. This is because when your focus shifts away from God, it is replaced by something or someone else. This can range from friends to family or other people and influences. And while they may provide you with temporary pleasure, and a sense of security, 
they cannot provide the same guidance and direction that God can. When we focus too much on our own desires, I feel like preaching now, but just hold it. When we focus too much on our own desires, we forget that he is the one in control and his plans are the best for us. According to Proverbs 16 and 9, the psalmist says, a man's heart devises his way. So then I break it down and says, considers and proposes to himself what he will do. Designs an end and contrives by what it means he may attain. But the Lord directeth his steps, which means ruleth and disposeth all his intentions and actions as he pleases, determining what the event shall be and ordering his motions perhaps to such an issue as never came into his thoughts. This is what God does when God begins to order your steps. So then it is expected of you to shift your focus and attention back to the creator and his plan for your life. For God God desires for you to stay connected to his plan and to stay mindful of his presence and direction. Now, you know, I'm not going to stand and say anything and mount the pulpit before you of my flesh. You know, I'm going to speak by revelation. I'm going to speak by how the Holy Spirit deal with me in my quiet time and my quiet place. So if you just want to sit there and look that's fine. Those of you that's watching me by way of stream, we're going to speak into your spirit now. The Bible tells us that God, it is his plan for us to stay mindful of his presence and direction. Found in the book of John chapter 15 verses 4 and 5. Remain in me and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine, neither can you bear fruit, producing evidence of your faith unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is cut off from vital union with me, you can do no thing. Somebody say, apart from God, I can do nothing. Yes, saints, apart from God, I can do no thing. It's important to remember that God, according to Revelation chapter 22 and verse 13, he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the eternal one. So then uh, we should always strive to prioritize him. Somebody say, God is my priority priority. Say it again. God is my priority. I come after God. God is my number one priority. I come after God. God is my daily number one priority. And I come after God. my number one priority and his plan over all else. This includes the things that influence us, our environments, our associations. It takes first place before you say good morning to anybody in your house. You kiss God. Before you say anything to anybody in your house, you kiss God. <laughs> kiss him back because he was looking at you while you were asleep and then when he decided you've been laying there long enough he kissed you on your cheek and woke you up and your eyes flung open and beheld a brand new day. The first thing you need to do is kiss God and then you tell God thank you. You tell him thank you. You begin to bless him before 
any influence, before any environment, before any relationship. The psalmist says in Proverbs 3, chapter 3, verse 5 and verse 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, God, you are right. That's what, you, that's what it means in all your ways you acknowledge him. You're telling him before your day start, God, you're right. He's wonderful in all of his ways. He's righteous in all of his acts. You are mighty. Then you can say, You're wonderful in all of your ways. Got it by now. You're righteous in all of your acts. You are mighty. Come on again. You say, You're wonderful in all of your ways. You're righteous in all of your acts. You are mighty. Isn't that what you're saying? agree with that. So you trust him in all your ways. I hear the sound. This is what I hear when he said that. All your way. God, you're right. He will make straight your paths. Remember, when we shift, on our environments, associates, influences. We forget that the only one who really know what is best for us is God. It's time to show our gratitude to God through giving. The Word of God reminds us in 2 Corinthians 9 and 6 that the one who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. So we prepare for our generous crop as we sow our financial seeds in faith today. To all of our virtual members, we are so glad to have you as a part of KCM, and we want to get to know you more. Would you please send us your contact information to KCMTampaFL at gmail.com so that we can stay connected. We look forward to meeting you real soon.